Raising capital is never easy. In fact, it's so difficult that a lot of entrepreneurs fail to do it. Let's say you have an idea, and this idea could potentially solve a problem that a lot of people face. The idea is probably a fintech solution hosted via app or website. You start thinking about the idea and get excited about the sheer possibilities. The question then becomes, how do you find the money to take this from an idea sitting in your mind to an actual tangible solution or company to potentially fulfilling your unicorn dreams to become the next Stripe or PayPal or Binance or Airbnb? Now, speaking of Airbnb, now even though they aren't a fintech, you have to think about them whenever you're on the topic of raising capital for a tech solution. For those who may not know, the founders of Airbnb sold cereal in order to raise capital to fund their idea in the early days. Before their fame, and fortune. The founders Brian Chesky, Joe Jebbia, and Nathan Blachazic at 27 years old were broke and struggling to pay their rent. They were in San Francisco and there was a large design conference coming up which meant all hotels were fully booked and people didn't have any accommodation. They came up with the idea to rent out their living room with three air mattresses to people looking for accommodation and provide them with complimentary breakfast for $80 a night. Now three air beds and breakfast, hence the name air bed and breakfast, which is what they were called in the early days. After this worked and they got people to patronize, they decided this was an idea they wanted to pursue as a business and build a website for. The only problem was, as I mentioned, they were broke, $20,000 in credit card debt, so they couldn't afford to fund the idea. In order to raise the money, they decided to sell boxes of cereal. Now, this was in 2008 when Obama and McCain were running for president. So they came up with a clever idea to buy regular cheap cereal for $4 a box and rebrand them as a limited edition campaign cereal with a $40 price tag. They made a thousand boxes, labeled 500 of them Obama O's and the other 500 Captain McCain. The cereal sold really well and they made that initial $30,000 which is how they funded Air Bed and Breakfast and sustained it till they got their first substantial round of funding from the Y Combinator Accelerator program. But even then, they were initially rejected by Paul Graham who is the founder of the Y Combinator. After they made their pitch, he simply could not believe that people were actually allowing strangers into their homes and thought they must be crazy. It was only after Joe Jebbia on the way out pulled out his cereal boxes and explained how they had created and sold these to fund the idea that Graham eventually gave them an opportunity. His words were, if you can convince people to pay $40 for a $4 box of cereal, then you can probably convince people to sleep in other people's air beds. Today, Airbnb is valued upwards of $100 billion and had one of the biggest IPOs ever. Now, the story of Airbnb just goes to show that even the most successful tech startups were faced with the issue of funding in the early days. And even though it's difficult to do, it's not impossible to achieve. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five ways to raise capital for your fintech idea, app or startup, so let's have a chat about it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about fintech, digital transformation and career development. Fintech is a space that is attracting a lot of attention and capital from investors. Technology is providing lots of avenues to improve products, services and the customer experience. Smaller players are coming up with unique and revolutionary solutions that are scaling rapidly and becoming mainstream. In 2021, the value of investments that went into fintech were well over $200 billion. And even in 2020, at the height of the pandemic, over $120 billion went to funding fintechs. The tech space is racking up so much attention, it's easy to think that raising funding is a simple task and all you need to have is just an app or a website and funders will be throwing cash at you. Like the story of the mobile app called Yo that was built in just eight hours and raised a million dollars with a single functionality of sending a text and audio notification to users that said, Yo, now those definitely cannot be your benchmarks if you're thinking of raising funding. So let's chat about some of the options that you can realistically explore to raise funding for your fintech idea or solution. But even before 
before we get into that, there are a number of questions you need to ask yourself in relation to your idea or product first. Should you even raise funding? Are you ready to have someone else tell you what to do and answer to them? Are you willing to take on the weight of expectations that funders come with, be it angel investors or venture capitalists? How will the money actually be used? What is it going to fund? How much do you need? What type of investor do you want? Is your intention to build, grow and sell to the highest bidder or to retain and grow the company to a large corporate? Is your product scalable? Because investors look at that to determine potential. These are important questions you need to answer upfront even before exploring funding options. So we'll try to answer them as we go along discussing each one of these options available to you for funding. The first funding option is bootstrapping. A bootstrapping is essentially funding the idea or product yourself. And this can be done either with your personal savings or your salary or additional revenue from a side business or even the money generated from the initial sales of the product or service itself. Family and friends can be considered as bootstrapping but I would like to treat that as a separate point going forward. So as the name suggests, rather than going out to investors or to banks for loans, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Bootstrapping is how most ideas are initially funded as we saw in the early days of the Airbnb story. Even with the story of Apple, Steve Jobs had to sell his Volkswagen Type 2 minibus and Steve Wozniak sold his HP programmable calculator for a couple hundred dollars in order for them to produce their first batch of circuit boards. Bootstrapping is the way to go if your answer was no to the initial questions of should you raise funding or are you ready to be accountable to a third party and bear the weight of their experience. Expectations. Some of the advantages of funding your idea yourself are that it allows you to retain full ownership of your business or fintech idea. You get to keep control over the direction of the product and the decision making in relation to it. It also forces you to create a business model that actually works because it's one thing to come up with a good idea, let's say a fintech app, but you need to be able to monetize the idea and also run the operations on a low budget initially. Knowing that your capital is limited forces you to be more efficient with your resources. Boost Bootstrapping also gives the entrepreneur a sense of pride and accomplishment because you're building the business from the ground up and it's your baby. However, it's important to note that there are some disadvantages of bootstrapping as well. The most evident one is you are always faced with the risk of quickly running out of capital. You may simply not have enough to take the idea far enough into development and to sustain the business's operations. It requires a lot more work and effort because you will have to perform multiple roles yourself in taking the idea forward. You also have limited support and opportunity that investors could have provided you in terms of networks and unlocking relationships within the fintech industry. So it's important that you remain cognizant of both the advantages and disadvantages of bootstrapping. I will add, however, that there have been fintechs that have bootstrapped their way to becoming unicorns, so it's definitely possible to do. You can check out the story of the Kamath brothers who bootstrapped their fintech called Zeroda from zero to a valuation of a billion dollars. That should be some motivation. The next source of funding is family and friends. Now, even though this is still considered under the umbrella of bootstrapping, I prefer to treat it as a separate point because there are a few nuances that need to be considered. Assuming you have no capital at all to fund your business or idea, family and friends becomes the logical next option. It simply entails gathering money from your own network of friends and family who are close and familiar to fund your idea or initiative. In very early stage startups, it can be difficult to raise external funding. So family and friends typically are sought to provide that seed funding to propel you onwards till you get to the level for angels and VCs. Family and friends, let's call it F and F, is usually the most attractive source of funding because one, most often that's the only option that you have available. Two, it's fast and immediate. Three, the terms are flexible and the money is inexpensive. Family and friends give you money based on trust and relationships. So there's usually no paperwork or contracting done and they most often don't charge you interest or have high expectations of you. But that can turn out to be problematic down the line as well. FNF isn't always straightforward and can cause some serious issues that you have to be careful about. For one, it can cause serious damage to the relationship, be it with your family or to that close friend. When money is involved, 
things can get really messy because well people change especially when the terms are not clearly defined up front or documented let's say your fintech idea blows up and your valuation skyrockets and that is when you begin to see the same family and friends who you trust begin to demand 30 40 50 percent equity in your business for their contribution in the early days so even though the relationship was based on trust that can quickly deteriorate if not managed correctly so my advice would be to carefully consider the terms of agreement and document everything even with those who are closest to you and want to support you. You don't want to burn lifelong relationships because you didn't do your due diligence or because you trusted people. Those are my two cents but the choice is yours. The next option is crowdfunding. Now crowdfunding has gained a lot of traction in recent years as a means of raising funding particularly in the tech space. So crowdfunding is simply a method of raising money to finance an idea, a product or business by leveraging an online platform that allows a large number of people to contribute to it. There are multiple ways to crowdfund before crowdfunding was focused on the product. So for example, if you had a fintech idea or product, you would share your product on a crowdfunding site like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And then if people bought into your idea, they would contribute towards it. And this would allow you the funding to actually go and build the idea. There's actually a fintech that I read about called Monzo Bank in the UK, who are a mobile first startup bank that set the world record for raising money for crowdfunding. They raised 1 million pounds in 96 seconds on the crowdfunding platform called Crowdcube. That's absolutely crazy. And it goes to show that if you have a great idea that solves a problem for many consumers, you will get their backing in the form of hard cash. Nowadays, equity crowdfunding has also gained popularity as well, but you have to be careful with that one because you don't want to end up with 500 to 1,000 shareholders who all feel they are decision makers in your business and will come telling you what to do. So there are ways to structure equity crowd funds to ensure there are limitations that are clearly communicated. So that becomes our third option for raising capital, especially if you have a target amount and a clearly defined allocation for that capital displayed for all funders to see. Accelerators are another option to raise capital for your fintech idea. Assuming you've made your peace with the idea of giving up equity in your business, being accountable to someone else, and you have a scalable idea or product, then accelerators would be a good option for you to raise capital. As the name suggests, fintech accelerator programs are usually organizations that help accelerate the growth of early stage fintech startups by providing funding, mentorship, connections to investors, and introductions to business partners. They are usually targeting promising founders who have a minimum viable product as a way to help them scale quickly. They will usually invest capital in your startup in return for a percentage of ownership in your business. Now because of the effort and resources this requires, accelerator programs are typically for a fixed period of time and have a strict admission criteria. You also need to have some traction, i.e. a working prototype with customers willing to pay for the service as evidence of your product market fit and relevance. Which leads me to incubators. Now, even though incubators don't provide as much funding or any at all, most often in the early stages, you need the funding to have access to an office space, equipment, and general logistics. And this is what incubators provide. Incubator programs help you incubate your idea and refine your model from the ground up. I have a full video where I go in depth about accelerators and incubator programs for fintechs so you can check that out for a more detailed breakdown of the differences between the two with the pros and the cons. Lastly we have angel investors and venture capitalists. This is a popular route for raising capitals for most businesses or startups including fintechs. The lines between angel investor and venture capitalists have blurred over the years and many people tend to think they are the same thing but broadly I believe the major difference is that angel investors tend to be high net worth individuals who are investing their own funds in the startup or idea, whereas venture capitalists are investing from a pool of funds on behalf of others, be it institutions or groups of individuals. And this means that the VCs can potentially cut larger checks than the angels, since they have a wider range because they're working from a pool of funds from multiple parties. Now, each of these funders will take an equity stake in return for granting you capital, and you get the additional benefits of their network, their business introductions, the clout of being associated with them and they bring a certain level of institutional credibility to your business or your startup. However, you have to be careful when going for funding from angels or VCs. Remember our initial questions. You have to be clear of the type of investor you want for your business. Investor partner relationships are like marriages. It might feel great in the beginning because you're desperate and they come to rescue you with funding and expertise. But if things go bad, just like a divorce, it can get very messy and difficult to get out of. So do your due diligence and be clear about 
the angel or VC that you want to invite to partake in your business. So friends, those are five ways to raise funding for your fintech idea, app, or startup, and it applies to any business really. Let me know in the comments which of these options would be your preferred funding choice. A mate of mine absolutely swears against any partnerships with family and friends because he tried it and it brought a rift in the family or the friendship for many years. So tell me which is your least preferred option as well. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, remember to like, share, and as always, the link is in the description for those who want to grab their African themed prints from where Ghana. Have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.